Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Uh, so today we're going to start going over the adding and subtracting fractions packet. It looks like this if you are following along with the paper copy at home. If you're using the online program Edulastic, then the screen that you're seeing now looks very familiar to you and you can follow along there, you know, do whatever works best for you. Uh, so this video today is going to cover questions one through 10. Um, the adding and subtracting fractions packet was designed to be completed during your second week of distance learning. That would be April 6th through April 10th. If you're completing it early, then that's perfectly fine. If you're starting it a little bit later in that second week, that's fine as well. You know, do whatever is working best for you guys and, and learning at home. Uh, so before we start, I do want to encourage that you have your math notebook out in front of you. And I want to just kind of point to you a couple of pages that you have in there that could really be a good resource for you guys. Uh, so the first one here, all of you have this in your math notebook. It's the adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers vocabulary page. So we've got some important words here like common denominators, least common multiple, uh, equivalent fractions, and then also greatest common factor. So that's a really good uh, resource page you can be using right now. I'm going to turn a couple pages here. Uh, you guys have that anchor chart that you made with me in class on adding and subtracting mixed numbers. We've got a sample word problem up here and then all of the steps that we go through when we add and subtract fractions. Okay, so you've got that in your notebook you can be using. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then also this handy dandy little chart right here, using friendly decimals to add or subtract fractions and mixed numbers. You have your own little chart here um, where it gives you the fraction on one side and then the equivalent decimal on the other side. That's gonna be really important whenever we're using that friendly decimal strategy. Uh, so as we work through these questions, you're gonna hear me ask you stuff like, what strategy do you think would be the best one to use here? Uh, so should we find the least common multiple or should we use our friendly decimal strategy? Um, so just kind of be, you know, thinking about that and then have your math notebook right here beside you. I think that'll just make things a little bit easier as we move forward. Okay, so let's start with question number one here. Um, and like I've done in all the other videos, this video will cover questions one through 10, and then every video after that will continue, um, you know, just kind of covering 10 questions at a time. I do that so you can pace yourself out, you know, in a nice way. But if you want to do more than one video a day, that's totally up to you guys. All right, question number one. Daniel walked five and a quarter miles on Monday and three and two thirds on Tuesday. How far did Daniel walk on Monday and Tuesday combined? All right, so picking out some keywords here, combined is definitely a keyword, and we've talked about that in class before. Um, so, what do you think the word combined means? What does it mean? Are we putting things together, taking things apart? Do we have equal groups of something? Are we breaking something down into equal size groups? Uh, when you combine, that means you are putting things together. So we're going to take the miles he walked on Monday, and we're going to put that together with the miles he walked on Tuesday, and we're solving for the total here. We're solving for how many miles he walked all together. So in this word problem, we should be adding. Okay, so we're going to add what he walked on Monday, which was five and one fourth. You can also read that as five and a quarter. Um, and we're going to add that to what he walked on Tuesday, which is three and two thirds. Okay, all right, so when we add these two uh, mixed numbers together, what strategy do you think is going to be the best one to use here? Can we do LCM? Or can we do FD? That stands for friendly decimals. Which strategy do you think is going to be the best one to use here? Keep in mind that friendly decimals strategy, uh, that's going to work really well when both of your mixed numbers, not just one, but both of your mixed numbers look like this. One fourth, one half, three fourths. So do both of your mixed numbers over here look like that? No, only one of them does. So in this case, we're not going to do friendly decimals. We're going to do our LCM strategy. Okay. Uh, and remember, be following along and taking notes. You can either take the notes here in your math notebook or you can show your work on this paper packet here, whatever works best for you guys. 
Okay, uh, so for this one, we are going to be finding the LCM. Remember, LCM, say it with me, that just stands for least common multiple. Multiples are those numbers that you say when you skip count. Uh, so we just want to know what's the lowest common multiple that is shared by our denominators, four and three. Okay, so I'm just going to list out really quickly the multiples of four. So that's going to be four. 8, 12, 16, and then I'm going to stop right there. I can always go back and add more if I need to. And then the multiples of 3, that would be 3, 6, 9. As you can see, I don't have a multiple in common here yet, so I'm going to keep going. 3, 6, 9, 12. Okay, so now I have a common multiple that is shared between 4 and 3. So now I have my LCM. It is going to be 12. My LCM is equal to 12. And what else are we going to use that 12 for? Hint, hint, look right here. What else are we going to use that 12 for? So remember, it's not just your least common multiple. We talked about how, especially when you guys get to middle school, you might hear your teachers refer to the LCM as the LCD, and that D stands for denominator. So that 12 is also your least common denominator. Uh, so what we're going to do here with 5 and 1 fourth and three and two thirds is we're going to be rewriting these mixed numbers and we want to rewrite them into mixed numbers that have a denominator of 12. And remember, we don't want to change the value here. We just want to change the way that they look. So we're making equivalent fractions. Okay, so five and one fourth in order to make that have a denominator of 12, we're going to have to multiply and we're going to multiply by three, because is it four times three, 12? It is, so we're gonna multiply by three. Uh, that's gonna give us a denominator of 12. Our numerator, one times three, is three, and then our whole number, that's gonna stay the same. We're not changing how many holes we have, we're just changing the way these mixed numbers look so that the denominators are going to be the same, and then we can add and subtract the way that we need to. Uh, so five and one fourth, that is equal to five and three twelfths, and then three and two thirds, we need to make an equivalent mixed number down here. So that means we need to multiply by, what do you think? Hopefully four. For this one, we're gonna multiply by four. Uh, so we know that three times four is 12, that's your denominator. For our numerator here, two times four is eight. And then again, we're not changing how many holes we have. We still have three holes. And then this extra one here. Uh, so now we're gonna add five and three twelfths plus three and eight twelfths. So here we have a couple of options. We can convert these mixed numbers into improper fractions and then add them, get an improper fraction, and then convert that back into a mixed number. Or what would be the smart thing to do here would be to see if we can just add them straight across and maybe we don't need to convert these into improper fractions. Uh, so when I try to just add straight across here, five plus three, that equals eight. Okay, but here's what you really need to pay attention to. It's your numerators. So when I add three plus eight, am I going to get a number that is smaller than my denominator? If the answer is yes, I'm good to go. If the answer is no, and I add three plus eight, and I get a number that is bigger than my denominator, then what that means is in my answer, I'm making an improper fraction, and we know that we can't leave our answer as an improper fraction. Uh, so that's when it might be a better idea just to go ahead and convert these two mixed numbers into improper fractions before you actually start adding them together. Um, in this case, when I add my numerators, three plus eight, that equals 11. That is smaller than my denominator, so I'm not going to have an improper fraction here. Um, my final answer would actually be 8 and 11 twelfths, and 8 and 11 twelfths is already in its simplest form, so then that's going to be the final answer here for question number one. Okay, all right, so I'm going to clear the screen and let's move on, look at question number two. All right, question number two says Christina is walking from her house to the library, a distance of eight and nine tenths miles. She has already walked three and a half. How much further does Christina have left to walk? Uh, so again, the important thing to start off with here is figure out what operation you're gonna be doing. 
are we going to be adding or subtracting? Well, if the distance from her house to the library is eight and nine tenths miles, then that's the total distance that she's ultimately going to be walking. Uh, if she's already walked part of it, so she's already walked part of it, that's the three and a half here. We, oops, sorry kind of hard to write here. Uh, so she's already walked part of that distance. We just want to know how much further does she have left to walk. So we're solving for the other part of that total here. This is going to be a subtraction problem. Uh, so for number two here, we're going to do eight and nine tenths minus three and a half. And then same question I asked you before about what strategy we should be using. Are we going to do LCM, least common multiple, or can we do friendly decimals here? Well, I see that three and a half is really easy to use as a friendly decimal. That would be 3.50. Um, and eight and nine tenths, some of you might even be able to use that one um, as a friendly decimal. So if that's something you're able to do, if you are able to convert eight and nine tenths into a friendly decimal, uh, you go ahead and do that. I'm sure most of you can, uh, because we did kind of talk about this in that second nine weeks when we were you know, looking at decimal grids and we were writing them as fractions and as decimals. Uh, for the for purpose of this video, I'm just going to use our LCM strategy over here. Uh, but you know, if you're working this out on your own, you're welcome to go ahead and try this friendly decimal strategy here. Um, and if you are curious about how to do that, then you can always head over to the Padlet um, and feel free to, to ask a question about that. Uh, so for this video, I am going to do LCM here. So we want to know what is the LCM of our denominators? Oops, sorry, 10 and two. Uh, so our LCM here, that is going to be, drum roll please, that is going to be 10. Because when we count by tens, we say 10, 20, right? When we count by twos, we say two, four, six, eight, 10. Uh, so 10 is definitely going to be the least common multiple here. So that means when I rewrite these mixed numbers, I want them to have denominators of 10. And then remember, I am not changing the value of these mixed numbers here. I'm just making equivalent mixed numbers that have common denominators. So then we can add and subtract them the way that we need to. Uh, so eight and nine tenths, it already has a denominator of 10. So that sucker right there, he is good to go. Uh, so we're just gonna rewrite that as eight and nine tenths. Now the three and a half here, that doesn't have a denominator of 10, obviously. Uh, so we need to make that happen. Happen. So what number are we going to multiply by? We are going to multiply by 5. So we know 2 times 5 is 10. That's your denominator. 1 times 5 is 5. That is our numerator. And then don't forget to bring that whole number down. So this is 8 and 9 tenths minus 3 and 5 tenths. Um, so now we just want to know, before we subtract here, do we want to convert these into improper fractions or do we want to go ahead and subtract across? What do you think would be the, the best thing to do here? And if you've already done it, look at your paper. What did you do? What in the world? Okay, so what do you think for this? Okay, so for this one, it would actually make more sense if we just went ahead and subtracted straight across um, because we know that when we subtract our numerators, nine minus five, our answer, our numerator is going to be smaller than our denominator, so we'll be good to go there. Uh, so when we subtract the whole numbers, eight minus three, that equals five. Then we're gonna subtract our numerators, nine minus five, that equals four. And then, of course, our denominator here is 10. So that gives us an answer of 5 and 4 tenths. And then, of course, 5 and 4 tenths is not in its simplest form. So I know for these questions, you don't have answer choices over here, but we have really talked a lot about this in class. Um, and anytime you have the chance to simplify, always go ahead and put a fraction or a mixed number in its simplest form. Uh, so to simplify 5 and 4 tenths, we should divide by 2. Two is going to be our GCF here. And you have all these vocabulary words in your math notebook. If you're thinking, okay, I've heard that, but I can't remember what it means. You do have those here in your math notebook. Um, so we're going to do five and four tenths divided by two. Whole number stays the same. Four divided by two is two. Ten divided by two is 
five. So our final answer for question number two here is five and two fifths. Okay. All right, friends, I'm going to keep moving on here. Question number three. Courtney has seven and three eighths yards of ribbon. She uses one and three quarters yards to wrap presents. How much ribbon does Courtney have left? Okay, so for this one, the seven and three eighths yards of ribbon, that's the total amount of ribbon that she has. Uh, the one and three fourths here, that's how much ribbon she has used. So if she's already used some of the ribbon here that she had, that means we're taking that much ribbon away. So we took part of the ribbon away. We just want to know kind of similar to the last question how much ribbon does she have left over uh, so what's the other part of the ribbon that she still has this is going to be a subtraction problem so we're going to do seven and three eighths minus one and three fourths so you know I'm going to ask you um, LCM or friendly decimals which one would make the most sense here this is going to be another LCM problem uh, because one and three quarters, that's very easy to convert into a friendly decimal. But seven and three eighths here, that one's going to be a little bit more tricky. Uh, and the whole point of that decimal strategy is to make it quick, make it easy, and make it simple for us to solve the problem. Uh, so for this one, we are going to do LCM. So be thinking, what is the LCM of eight and four? And I remember whenever we left for the break, you guys were doing, well, I don't know if I should call it a break, but whenever we ended school on Friday the 13th, uh, you guys were doing a really good job at figuring out the LCM in your head. So I hope that's a skill we've been able to keep sharp. Um, so the LCM here for eight and four, that is going to be eight. Um, so we want to rewrite these mixed numbers to have a denominator of eight. 7 and 3 eighths already has a denominator of 8, so we're just going to bring that straight down. That one's good to go. 1 and 3 fourths, we want to make it have a denominator of 8, so just like we've done for the others, we are going to have to multiply. And what should we multiply by? Well, 4 times 2 is 8, so we're going to multiply by 2. Bring the 1 down. Um, we have the right denominator, so good to go there. And then for your numerator, 3 times 2 is Six. So now we're doing seven and three eighths, which is obviously the same mixed number we started with. And then we're going to subtract from that one and six eighths, which is equivalent to one and three fourths. Um, so what do you think here? Can we subtract straight across or do we need to convert these into improper fractions? Look at your numerators. See what happens there. Okay, so if you sub, uh, subtract your numerators here, 3 minus 6, that equals negative 3. So technically, that is going to be smaller than your denominator here, but we know that we can't subtract, you know, 3 minus 6 and get a positive number. We want a positive number in our answer, um, and we can't just swap the order of these mixed numbers because then you're going to be doing 1 minus 7, and you're going to be in the same boat all over again. So for mixed numbers like this, we want to go ahead and convert them into proper fractions. Uh, so we're going to take our denominator here, we're going to multiply that by our whole number, and then we're going to add that to the numerator. So 8 times 7 is 56. 56 plus 3 is 59. So as an improper fraction, that is 59 eighths. And then we'll do the same thing for 1 and 6 eighths. 1 times 8 is 8. 8 plus 6, so 8 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, that's going to equal 14. So this is now 14 eighths. So this just makes it a little bit easier for us to subtract here. Uh, so now we're going to do 59 eighths minus 14 eighths. Uh, so let's see, 9 minus 4, that is equal to 5. 5 minus 1. That's equal to 4, so that's 45, and then our denominator stays the same, so that is 45 eighths, and then we just want to go ahead and make sure we convert that back into a mixed number. Uh, so remember to go from an improper fraction to a mixed number, we just divide N divided by D, so that's going to be 45 divided by 8, so we want to count how many times can 8 go into 45, well that's going to be 5 times, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, so five times, and then we're going to have a remainder 
of 5 because we know 8 times 5 is 40, but we're trying to get to 45. So we're going to have 5 digits left over. So if 45 divided by 8 is 5 remainder 5, our mixed number is going to be 5. That's the whole number. And 5 eighths. So your remainder just becomes your numerator here. So that's going to be 5 and 5 eighths. It is already in its simplest form, so that's going to be your final answer. Okay? All right, question, did I not clear? There we go. All right, question number four. All right, number four, Dudley builds a fence that is seven and two thirds meters long. The next day he adds another five and a half meters. How long is the fence that Dudley built? Okay, so when he originally built the fence, it was seven and two thirds meters long. I guess it wasn't long enough. Uh, he decided to go back the next day and add another five and a half meters. So we are making the fence longer than it was originally. So we are going to add seven and two thirds plus five and a half. Uh, so LCM or friendly decimals? This one's going to be LCM as well. I promise you there are some friendly decimal problems in here somewhere. All right, so we're gonna find the LCM here of three and two. The LCM of three and two is going to be six, three, six, so counting by threes, two, four, six, counting by twos. So our LCM is six. That means we want our denominators to be six. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in. Now, seven and two thirds and five and a half, we're gonna have to make equivalent fractions for both of these. Okay, so for seven and two thirds, we're gonna multiply by what number? We're gonna multiply by two because we know three times two is six, two times two is four, so that's gonna be your numerator. So the equivalent mixed number is seven and four sixths. For five and a half, what number should we multiply by? we are going to multiply by three because two times three is six. Uh, so that's gonna be your denominator. One times three is three, that is your numerator. So that's going to be five and three, six. Now let's see, can we go ahead and add these together? If I do seven plus five, that equals 12. Um, four plus three, Four plus three equals seven. That's 12 and seven six. Now that does give us an improper fraction right here. Seven six is an improper fraction. Uh, so what I would recommend for some of you is to convert both of these mixed numbers into improper fractions and then add them together. But before we do that, I do want to uh, show you guys how to do this here. Okay, so 12 and 7, 6, we can actually go ahead and write that as the correct mixed number. Okay, so for 12 and 7, 6 here, what we're going to do is, since 7, 6 is technically bigger than 1, right, because improper fractions show values that are greater than 1, what we need to do here is figure out how many of these pieces in the numerator can I take away in order to make a whole. Uh, so a whole, since my denominator is 6 here, we know that 6, 6 is equal to a whole. So if I can take 6, 6 out of this, I can make a new whole. So if I have 7, 6, and I take away 6, 6, to make a new whole, what's going to be left over? One six is going to be left over. Well, how many six six, how many one holes was I able to take away from this? Right here, I was able to take away only one hole. So that means I'm going to actually add a new hole to this 12 here. So now I don't just have 12 holes, I have 13. See, because I had seven six. I tried to make a new hole. I had enough pieces to make a new hole. I took away one hole here, okay? I was able to make a new hole. So I'm gonna add that to how many holes I had. So now I have 13 and what was left over after I did that, one sixth. So the final answer here is going to be 13 and 1 6. And I know some of you uh, in class, you were kind of starting to notice like, oh, we could just do it this way. And so I want you to go with that. I want you to, you know, practice doing that. And, and I'll do my best in these videos to show it to you both ways. Uh, some of you, you might not quite get this yet, and that's fine. It is going to click for you 
at some point whenever we're, you know, doing these videos or when we're able to come back to school and practice this a little bit more. Um, so that's just one way that you could go from 12 and 7, 6 to the correct answer. I do want to go ahead and show you, though, using those improper fractions. Uh, so kind of back over here to adding 7 and 4, 6 plus 5 and 3, 6. If I convert those to improper fractions, I should eventually come back to this correct answer here, which is 13 and 1, 6. Uh, so 7 and 4, 6, I'm going to convert that to improper. 6 times 7 is 42. 42 plus 4 is 46. So that's going to be 46 sixth. And then 5 and 3 six here. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 plus 3 is 33. So this is going to be 33 six. And then I'm going to add these together. Uh, so 46 plus 33. 6 plus 3 is 9. 4 plus 3 is 7. So that's going to give us 79 six. And then I want to convert that back into a mixed number. So here, what we're going to do is 79 divided by six. And so here you could count by sixes. Um, when the numbers start to get really big here, when that dividend, that numerator starts to get really big, uh, don't forget you could also come over here and do your long division. I know we think of long division as like something that takes forever, but not necessarily. Now that you guys know the steps as well as you do, you can actually do long division you know, especially if it's a two digit number divided by a one digit number, you can actually do this very quickly. Uh, so how many times will six go into seven? One time minus six, that equals one. Bring down, sorry, my head is in the way over here. Uh, bring down the nine, that gives you 19. How many times will six go into 19? Well, that's going to be three times. Hey, 13, 13, looky there. Uh, so six times three is 18. 19 minus 18 is 1. So when we did our long division over here, I got 13 remainder 1. And doing the long division over here was a lot faster than me having to sit here and count 6, 12, 18, 24, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, so see, we got 13 remainder 1. So that means 79, 6 is equal to 13 and 1, 6 which is the same answer we got up here by taking one hole away from our seven six in order to make a new hole. Uh, so either strategy that you're comfortable with is fine with me, just as long as you're, you know, using one of them and getting the right answer and, and that sort of thing. So we'll kind of practice both ways as we continue to go through these questions. Okay, but the final answer for number four, 13 and 1, 6. Make sure you've got that written, uh, written down. If you will, please circle that final answer for me. All right, question number five, halfway there. All right, number five. Cassie has three and five eighths cups of sugar. She uses one and a half to make brownies. How much sugar, oh, excuse me, I had a hiccup there. How much sugar does Cassie have left? Okay, so she had three and five eighths. That's going to be her total. She used this much of it to make brownies. So if she's already used it to make brownies, we're taking that part away. And we want to know what part does she have left over of our total? What does she have left? So this is going to be a subtraction problem. So that's three and five eighths minus one and a half LCM or friendly decimals. What you thinking? What are you thinking? This one's going to be LCM again. Uh, so we know that 3 and 5 eighths, that would be a little bit bigger than 3.50, right? Because 3 and 4 eighths would be 3 and a half. Uh, 1 and a half, we know that one's going to be exactly 1.50. Uh, but since it would be a little bit harder for us to calculate exactly what decimal this would be, uh, it might just be easier for us to find the LCM. So what would be the LCM here of our denominators? Eight and two. What's going to be our LCM? Well, when I count by eights, I say eight, 16, right? When I count by twos, two, four, six, eight, um, our LCM is going to be eight. So again, we want to make equivalent mixed numbers here. 
and we want them to have a denominator of eight. That'll just make it easier for us to uh, subtract these mixed numbers here. So three and five eighths, that one already has a denominator of eight. So we're just gonna go ahead and rewrite that here. One and one half, we're gonna have to multiply to find the equivalent fraction. And since we know two times four is eight, we're gonna multiply by four. Uh, so we've got our denominator, we're gonna bring our one whole straight down, and then for our numerator, one times four is four, so we just write that here. And then, what do you think? Can we subtract straight across, or should we convert them into improper fractions? Okay, look at your numerator. That's going to, to really kind of tell you what's gonna be the easiest for you to do here. For this one, I would just go ahead and subtract straight across, and here's why. Uh, three minus one, is two, five minus four is one, and then here's your denominator. Uh, so for that one, it was actually pretty simple. When we subtracted our numerators, the answer to that was smaller than our denominator, so we just have a perfect mixed number here. Uh, so your final answer for number five is two and one eighth. Okay, I'm gonna keep going, pause the video at any time if you need to, to check over your work or to copy it down if you haven't had a chance to do that yet. All right, question number six. Yay, we like to see this, right? I try to give you those clues whenever I could. All right, so for number six, at closing time, a restaurant has seven and a half pumpkin pies and five and one fourth pecan pies. How many pies does the restaurant have in all? So we are solving for the total here, friends. And since these two fractions are not the exact same fraction, we can't multiply them. They're two different fractions. So to solve for the total, we are going to have to add. So this is going to be seven and a half plus, notice how I'm writing this, plus five and one fourth. Um, I'm adding them this way because I know seven and a half and five and a quarter are mixed numbers that I can use my friendly decimal strategy with. So if I write it vertical like this, I can just put my friendly decimals over here off to the side and they will already be lined up vertically so that I can add them together. Uh, so seven and a half, what is that gonna be as a friendly decimal? That's going to be 7.50. And then five and a quarter, what's that going to be as a friendly decimal? That's going to be 5.25. And see, we can just go ahead and add these together. So zero plus five is five. Five plus two is seven. Make sure you go ahead and bring down that decimal here. And then seven plus five is 12. So that's 12.75. Uh, remember, we do want to convert that back into a mixed number. So our mixed number would be 12. And then 0.75, don't forget, you do have this chart here in your notebook. Okay, you do have that chart here in your notebook. So feel free to have that out while we're going over these problems. Uh, but 0.75, if you were to write that as a fraction, 75 cents, that's going to be three quarters. And it takes four quarters to make a whole dollar. So that's going to be 12 and three fourths. So that is your final answer here to question number six. All right, question number seven. Joseph hiked eight and three fourths miles. His friend Patrick hiked three and a half miles farther than him. How far did Patrick hike? So I'm gonna actually pull out my math notebook here. There's a problem that we did together in class very similar to this one. So remember this problem we did in class, it's in your notebook. Marcos has one and 11 twelfths more yards of string than Calix. Calix has one and one third. How much string does Marcos have? So this problem is actually very similar to that one that we've already done in our notebook. We know how far Joseph hiked, right? Eight and three quarter miles. We don't know how far Patrick hiked, but we do know that he hiked further than Joseph and we know exactly how much further. He went three and a half miles further. So if we take how much further Patrick went than Joseph, and we add that to how far Joseph went, then we're going to know exactly how far Patrick did hike. Uh, so this is going to be an addition problem. So eight and three fourths. And again, I'm going to write that vertical plus three and a half, because I'm going to use my friendly decimal strategy here. Um, so eight and three fourths, what would that be as a friendly decimal? 
That's going to be 8.75, right? Don't forget, you have that chart in your notebook. And then three and a half, what's that going to be as a friendly decimal? That is 3.50. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and add these together. Uh, five plus zero, that is five. 7 plus 5 is 12. Bring down my decimal. Regroup a 1. Um, 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 plus 8 is 12. So that's 12.25. And then again, we want to finish our answer as a mixed number because that's just the type of numbers that we're working with here in the problem. So 12.25, that's going to be 12 and 1 fourth, right? Because if you have 0.25, that's one quarter out of the four quarters it takes to make a dollar. So if you have one quarter out of four, that is one out of four, that is one fourth. So it's going to be 12 and one fourth is your final answer for number seven here. All right, question number eight. Yesterday, Jeffrey and Carolyn Sure, let's call her Carlin. Uh, Jeffrey and Carlin went running. Jeffrey ran five and one sixth miles, and Carlin ran three and two thirds miles. How much further did Jeffrey run than Carlin? All right, so we know for this problem exactly how far both of our people here ran. We're just comparing the distance. So we know that Jeffrey did run further than Carlin. We just want to know exactly how much further. So if you're comparing their distance here, then that's going to be a subtraction problem. And we've talked about this a lot with the word than. That's a big comparison word. Like how many more pins does Jacqueline have than Jonathan. We're comparing their quantity, so you would subtract. In this case, we're comparing uh, the distance that they were running, so we're still going to subtract here. So we're going to start with Jeffrey because his is bigger. Five and one sixth is bigger than three and two thirds. You would probably much rather have five and one sixth pizza than three and two thirds pizzas. Okay, uh, so we're going to do five and one sixth minus three and two thirds. Um, LCM or friendly decimals here. This is going to be another LCM problem. Okay, uh, so our LCM for six and three, uh, we would call these related fractions because I can count by three and get to six, three, six, right? So six is a multiple of three. So we're, you know, our LCM would be six here. Okay, so we want to rewrite these into equivalent mixed numbers that have the correct denominator. Uh, five and one six already has the right denominator, so we're just going to rewrite it. And then three and two thirds, we need an equivalent mixed number that has a denominator of six. So we're going to have to multiply. And what are you thinking we should multiply by to get to six? We're going to multiply by two because we know that three times two is six, right? So then our numerator, two times two, that would be Four. Uh, so we're going to do five and one six minus three and four six. And for this one, to avoid having to do one minus four, I would go ahead and convert these into improper fractions. So six times five is 30. 30 plus one is 31. So that's going to be 31. Whoops. There we go. 31 sixth as an improper fraction. And then three and four six. 6 times 3 is 18, 18 plus 4 is what, 22, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So that's going to be 22, 6, and then we're going to subtract here. So 22 to 31, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. That is going to be 9. And then our denominator is 6. So we get 9 6 as our improper fraction. Uh, we do want to go ahead and convert that back, though, into a mixed number. So remember, n divided by d, 9 divided by 6. How many times will 6 go into 9? It'll go one time. What'll be left over? Well, 6 times 1 is 6. So 7, 8, 9, 3 is what you have left over. Okay, so that's going to be your remainder. So then as a mixed number, we would write that as 1 and 3 sixth. And hopefully the wonderful math brain that you have is going, oh, no, we're not done. Because, of course, we can, we can simplify that fraction, right? So 1 and 3 sixth, that would be equal to 1 and a half, right? Because our GCF is what number? 
our GCF is three, right? Because three is a prime number. Its only factors are one and three. So three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. We get one and a half. Uh, so he ran one and a half miles further. Not too bad. All right, a couple more questions here, friends. All right, so question number nine. Kate read seven and one third chapters of chapters of her book last night and another three and one fourth chapters of her book this morning. How many chapters of her book did Kate read in all? Uh, so for this one, we're definitely going to be solving for the total. We want to know how many chapters she read all together. And since we've got, you know, one amount of chapters she read last night and then a different amount of chapters she read this morning, uh, we definitely can't multiply here. So we're going to add these together. Seven and one third plus three and one fourth friendly decimals lcm lcm right because three and a fourth is a good friendly decimal but seven and one third mm, not quite so much uh, so let's find the lcm here what's going to be your lcm of three and four so if you list out the multiples of three you got three six nine twelve if you list out the multiples of four, then you've got four, eight, 12, and there we go. We found our LCM is going to be 12, okay? So our LCM is 12, right? That means we want to have um, denominators of 12. So we're gonna rewrite seven and one third and three and one fourth to have denominators of 12. Now, neither one of these have denominators of 12, so we're gonna have to multiply to make equivalent fractions for both of these. So for one third, what do you think we should multiply by? You can always look at your list right here. One, two, three, four. We had to count by three four times to get to 12, so we're gonna multiply by four, right? So that's gonna give us seven and four twelfths. And then for three and one fourth, we should multiply by, well, look at your list here. We had to count by fours three times to get to 12. So we're gonna multiply by three. So that's gonna make this equivalent um, mixed number three and three twelfths. And then what do you think here? Should we convert these into improper fractions or should we just go ahead and add them straight across? What would you do here? What would you do fifth grader? Um, I can tell you what I would do. I would go ahead and add them straight across because I know four plus three is seven. That means my numerator is gonna be smaller than my denominator, which is good. That's what we want. Uh, so let's add the whole numbers here. Seven plus three is what? 10. And then add your numerators. Four plus three is seven. And then of course your denominator is 12. So that's gonna be 10 and seven twelfths. Seven is a prime number. Its only factors are seven and one. So that means the GCF would have to be seven, but the only problem is you can't do 12 divided by seven and get a whole number. It's gonna be um, a fraction or a decimal, something that has a remainder to it, and that's not what we want here. So 10 and seven twelfths is gonna be the correct answer for number nine. All right, friends, one more. Y'all are doing great. Uh -oh, didn't mean to click, oh no. Sorry, friends, I got a little click happy there. Okay, question number 10. All right, Kent has two pieces of pipe. The first, pi uh, the first piece is seven and a half feet long. The second piece is eight and three quarters feet long. What is the combined length of these two pieces of pipe? Uh, so you can see that combined, that's a word we've already talked about in this video. Uh, so he has two pieces, you know, piece number one is this length, Piece number two is this length. We want to know what is the length all together. When you put those two pipes together, what is going to be your length? Uh, the operation that shows us how to put things together and find the total, that's addition. Uh, so we're going to add these together. And I gave you a nice little hint here, friendly decimals. Uh, so we're going to finish on a strategy that we love. Uh, so seven and a half, I am going to write this vertical so I can show my friendly decimal conversions off to the side here. Okay, so we're gonna add seven and a half plus eight and three fourths. So seven and a half, what is that in friendly decimal world? That's going to be 7.50. 
or 7.5, right? And then 8 and 3 fourths as a friendly decimal, that is 8.75. And don't forget, friends, you have that those notes in your notebook, okay? And you have that conversion chart, okay? I definitely recommend you, you know, use that as we work through these problems. Excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and add these together. Uh, so 0 plus 5 is 5. 5 plus 7 is 12. Don't forget, go ahead and bring that decimal straight down. Um, 7 plus 1 is 8, so that gives me a nice doubles fact here. 8 plus 8 is 16, so that's 16.25. If we write that as a mixed number, what would that be? If you have 25 cents, you have one out of the four quarters that you need to make a dollar, so that's one out of four. That's one fourth. Because remember, we read one fourth as one quarter. Well, if you have 25 cents, you have one quarter. So they're equal to each other. Uh, so the combined length of our pipes is going to be 16 and one fourth. And if you wanted to throw your units in there, our unit of measurement is feet. So six and a quarter feet. All right, friends. Well, thank you for joining my video today on the YouTube channel. Uh, feel free to go ahead and look for the next video that covers the next 10 questions. Um, if it's not up there now while you're watching this video, it should be up there um, very soon. So yeah, I look forward to continue teaching you guys. And if you need anything, as always, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Bye, friends. I will talk to you later.